This next example comes out of section 9.2, Analyzing Rational Functions. This one I've taken right out of the assignment for 9.2. It's uh, textbook number 12. Uh, I think it's page 453. Uh, in first reading this question, it it's, uh, seems like it's awfully complicated. Uh, the wording is difficult. There's a lot of stuff going on there that's actually extra. You know, the name of the plane, uh, where the two towns are in, in you know, Northwest Territories and whatever. Uh, the, these parts are not vital to the question. But what is vital and really is something we do need to know is how rational functions relate to distance speed time problems because that's one of the most common applications of them um, if i'm walking five kilometers per hour for three hours i think most people will tell me that that's going to be 15 kilometers uh, and, and so even though they might not have memorized that distance equals speed times time it kind of makes sense uh, given what they what they already know about speeds and times and how fast people go and how far they go and so in this uh, case we've got this airplane that travels at an airspeed of 250 kilometers per hour uh, the wind speed which we'll call w um, and then the distance which is 500 kilometers from one town to the other so initially i i can say that 500 kilometers is equal to the speed that the plane travels relative to the ground, which is going to be 250 plus w um, times t. Now, that's not too, too bad because it's distance equals speed or velocity times time, especially if you've done a little bit of physics, even the science 10 version of physics. Um, in the question, they ask us to solve that for t. They say, right, t is a function of w, something to that effect. And so we could just divide by this 250 plus w term. Now, even just common sense would let us know that if w is positive, uh, meaning if the wind is at our back, we're going to go faster and we're going to arrive sooner at our destination. If w is negative, meaning if the wind is in our face, uh, it'll take us longer because we'll travel slower. And so, uh, again, you would need to be a physics student uh, for that part to make sense to you. Our non permissible value here is that W uh, can't equal negative 250. Now, if the wind speed is 250 kilometers per hour in your face, uh, you've got bigger problems than it taking a long time for you to get there. Uh, but, you know, the divide by zero problem exists, so that's a non-permissible value. Now, they ask us to graph this function. Uh, now, obviously, you have to do it with Ys and Xs instead of Ts and Ws. But if you graph this thing, and graph it big enough that you actually see uh, the non-permissible value, you find that non-permissible value is actually um, a vertical asymptote that, that, that x equals, and in this case it's actually w, but at w equals negative 250, you have this, um, your curve does something roughly like this. Um, now, let's talk about why it looks like this, because it's more important than the actual exact labeling and numbers on the curve. If there was no wind whatsoever, uh, your your plane would just go 250 kilometers per hour and it would take you two hours to get there. So, you know, our time would be exactly two hours and that's this value right here, 0, 0,2. Um, if the wind helps you, starts blowing in your face, in other words, if the wind is positive, the more positive it gets, the faster you go and the, the less time it takes you. And, you know, in theory, if you had you know, a 200 kilometer per hour wind or a 250 kilometer per hour wind behind you, um, you'd be traveling 500 kilometers per hour and get there in one hour. Now, realistically, I don't think anyone would fly in a 250 kilometer an hour wind for or against you. Um, the dangers would probably be a bit too much. I'm no pilot, but I can imagine that's not a good idea. Um, it also makes sense that on this graph, this negative 250 and anything to the left of it really is not relevant to us. We're not going to talk about winds f faster than that. And if you did try to fly in a wind that was greater than your airspeed, it means it's going to blow you backwards. And that's why these negative times and negative sp uh, wind speeds uh, exist on the graph, but they don't really, they're not relevant to our situation. Now, what's interesting is close to the asymptote, what's going on is as the wind does get stronger, it takes us longer and longer and longer 
to get to our destination. Now, in theory, imagine a wind that was 249 kilometers per hour. It means that you would be only traveling one kilometer per hour in the forward direction, and it would take you 500 hours to get to where you're going. Now, obviously, that's a bit of an exaggerated example, but you can see why this graph goes up as steeply as it does. So uh, the textbook question, again, really good question. Uh, most students read it for the first time and are a little confused and worried. Um, but if, if that makes sense to you, then you're probably in pretty good shape for distance speed time problems going forward.